This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2011. How do I warm up for heavy lifting? And rotating your crops? Both by Mark Fisher of markfisherfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik, reading you some of the most popular health and fitness blogs out there, with permission from the websites, of course. And always, with a bit of my commentary at the end. Now, I usually read you just one blog each day, but occasionally when the article is a bit on the shorter side, I read you two. And that's what's happening today. So with that, let's get right to our two posts as we optimize your life. How do I warm up for heavy lifting? By Mark Fisher of markfisherfitness.com. To get the most out of your workouts, you need to properly prepare your body. And that requires more than just a full body warm-up. In this post, I'll cover the very best protocol for days when you're lifting heavy weight. As a diligent reader or listener of these fitness missives, you already know the basics of a great full body warm-up that lubes you up for the workout ahead. But after you've got your whole system raring to go on a global level, we still need some exercise-specific warm-up sets to prepare for strength training. This is all the more critical if you're going to be doing some heavy lifting that day. And since relatively heavy lifting is a key stimulus for long-term health and hotness, my hope is you're doing this one to three times per week. By doing some lighter sets, you can grease the groove, so to speak, and practice technique for the lift before exposing your body to the heavier loads on your working sets. In fact, if you're lifting with loads that you'll do for five reps or less, you may need as many as three to four warm-up sets to properly prep your body and nervous system. Now, because I live inside your mind, I know what you're asking. How do I know what loads to use for the warm-up sets to best prepare my body without blowing myself up before the work set? Okay, although the answer depends on how heavy you're going that day, here's a very crude overview when your work sets are with a weight heavy enough that you only lift for six reps per set or less. Set one, light specific warm-up set. Perform eight to 12 reps, maybe just the barbell for barbell lifts as an example, or no more than 50% of your upcoming work set. This should feel easy. Go by feel. Set two, medium heavy specific warm-up set. Here, perform three to five reps. This can be done with 75 to 80% of your working weight you're purposely leaving all the gas in your tank. You're letting your body get accustomed to lifting heavier weight without blowing up your muscles. And set three, heavy-ish specific warm-up set. Here, do only two to three reps. This can be done with 90% of your work set weight. It should feel heavy, but not be taxing. Now you're ready to lift. Before I sign off and send you to commune with the iron, let me provide a bit more context for when to use this warm-up protocol. In the beginning of your strength training career, newer lifters aren't strong enough to need this many warm-up sets. This warm-up scheme is overkill and unnecessary for the first 3-12 to months. If your work sets are lower to moderate loads with 12 reps or more, you may not even need separate warm-up sets. You'll be greasing the groove while performing the work sets themselves. But at a certain point, as limit strength increases, a good full body warm up isn't sufficient to prepare your body for a great lifting session. You need to get some exposure to meaningful load without actually taxing your body and getting fatigued. All of this is a bit of an art. Individual preference and personal feel can and should factor in when making warm up decisions on a given day. Some lifts will take you more time than others to prepare for, and some days you will need more warm up sets than other days. Having said that, the framework discussed here today is a great starting point. Here's a final way to fine-tune your approach over time. Have you ever done your first work set and it felt just kind of wonky, and then the second set really smoothed out? That's great data. That means you weren't properly warmed up. Next time, play with one more exercise-specific warm-up set. Rotating Your Crops by Mark Fisher of markfisherfitness.com. You may be familiar with the concept of rotating crops. This is a farming technique where you grow different crops on the same piece of land at different times of the year. I've often written about fitness in response to broader seasons of your life at large. For your author, 
a season focused on a newborn child is a very different season than one focused on enjoying the ease and time wealth of 20-something singledom. Rotating your crops is a slightly different but equally useful framework for balancing your long-term fitness and health goals with your short-term pleasure goals. To be clear, I'm not suggesting a fully-on, fully-off approach to fitness. I'm not endorsing alternating periods of eating and drinking everything you want to be followed by periods of highly restrictive dieting. That would be like alternating planting your crops with periods of slashing and burning your crops. But a calendar year has its own rhythms. It lends itself to turning the volume up or down on your fitness habits. And that's okay. Some times of year, like the holidays, we'll have a busier schedule of social functions, traditions, and delicious snacks. We may not be able to work out as often. We may be indulging a bit more than usual. But in the context of celebrating the holidays and connecting with loved ones, there can be a place for this in your personal best life. Other times of year, like the new year, can inspire more adherence to leveling up your fitness. And while most New Year's resolutions seem to fail, particularly when one attempts a dramatic overhaul, there can still be value in leveraging a fresh start. Now here's what I really like about the metaphor of rotating your crops. It's only normal for us to experience hedonic adaptation. This is a fancy term that means the third bite of chocolate cake is never as good as the first. It also means the third mug of spiked apple cider at your fifth holiday party is never as delicious as the first one at the first party of the season. We adapt. Each successive indulgence loses some of its sparkles. Even if we're optimizing for pleasure, we'll do better to ride these ebbs and flows. Because when we do savor a treasured snack or work out less and rest more, it feels novel. We can adapt our habits to a given time of year to create ease and support our enjoyment of short-term pleasures and still keep an eye out for long-term health and fitness success. Like the statisticians say, all models are wrong, some are useful. This model isn't perfect. In practice, many people struggle with turning the volume up or down as opposed to turning the music totally off. Credit to Dr. John Berardi for the metaphor. But there's wisdom here. As we approach the next holiday or vacation, I'll still nudge you to manage your fitness minimums. Again, I'm not endorsing throwing all fitness habits to the wind. I'm saying that you only get to live one life. And by being intentional and rotating our crops, we can leverage the seasonality of a calendar year to live our personal best life and optimize for pleasure and thriving. You just listened to the posts titled, How Do I Warm Up for Heavy Lifting? and Rotating Your Crops, both by Mark Fisher of markfisherfitness.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I really love the metaphor of rotating your crops as a way to cope with changes to your fitness routine or really any routine. In fact, if we're talking about fitness, Experts in the fitness industry advise all of us to mix things up every once in a while. I'll give you an example. If you're training for a marathon, you don't run 26.2 miles every day leading up to it as part of your training. You mix up your training so that you don't end up overtraining and injuring yourself, and instead, you're fresh for the actual event. In the fitness industry, there's actually a fancy term for this. It's called periodization. In order to maximize long-term performance, you mix up your training. So if you end up deviating from your routine for whatever reason, let's say a vacation, a holiday, or whatever, just do your best to find other ways to stay active and think of it as a form of periodization. All right, that'll do it for today. Don't forget, I'll be back here tomorrow for the usual Friday Q&A. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.